Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at configuring our track header. There's a really simple way to do this. If you click on option T when you're in this main window, this floating window will pop up. And with this popover, we can choose all of the different things that we want to have really visible here. For me, when I'm typically working, I like having everything turned on. That's just how I'm used to working. I like having all of this stuff here, but let's go through and actually look at just a few of these things. And just a reminder, if you don't see all of these options in the first place, don't forget to go into advanced tools and turn on all of your advanced tools. But once you're here with these, you can go through and have the on off switch. So this is one of the, the newer features. It's been around for a long time, but it's actually really functional now. If you turn off a track, it's actually going to save on the resources and unload the track. The mute solo ones are almost, they're on by default, but the protect one is nice. If you have a track, you don't want any automation to be moved or anything or any regions to be moved. If you have a huge project and don't want to accidentally do something, definitely click on protect. The freeze option is great if you're in a resources limited project or on a computer that doesn't have tons of resources. That way you can freeze the tracks and uh, save those resources. The record enable and input monitoring are also on by default. I guess technically means you could pull them off if you wanted to, but I don't know why you would want to. Uh, perhaps if you're in a point in a project where you don't want to accidentally record arm something. Okay. With the controls, we have our volume control. The only time I can think of wanting to take that out is if you're trying to save on screen real estate and you either have a control surface or you're using the app or you're using the mixing window a lot. Um, with a pan, this is kind of nice because you can set the default pan to also be one of the sends. So this is nice that you can have that option to set that up from the beginning. One of the reasons you do that is if you're doing a lot of things with headphone mixes, that could be one option because you'd send those out through those and you could just start getting that set up here and worry about the panning maybe in the mixer or some other place. But that's a great thing as well. We can do an additional name column. That's this little spot on the right side of the track header. And you have a couple different options for this. We can set it to automatic. It'll just guess based on context what it wants to show among these other options, which are the patch or channel strip, software instrument setting name, channel strip name, channel strip type and number. So this is kind of nice. I would typically leave it on the last one if I wanted it. And that's because no matter what I call the track or anything else, it'll still show me which type it is and which number it is of those. But it's also kind of nice if you have a bunch of channel strip names that you're using on things. So we could, for instance, set it to this. And then on this one, we could change the name to like the name of the person singing. And you'll see the default is still set here. And that's showing us the, the preset. But then the name we just gave it shows up on the right side there. So it's a great way to be able to customize it a little bit in one place, but not necessarily throw off the entire thing. That's not one that I typically leave on, but you can see how it's moving back and forth up there. For now, we'll leave it on. Down below, the track numbers, that's on the left side. I almost always just have that on. It doesn't take up any space, really. The color bars, I go back and forth using those. I do like to color code things, but most of my projects, when I'm doing all of it from beginning to end, I don't need the color coding quite as much because I know the project really well. But when I'm working with a client on a client project, I almost always do a ton of color coding just so that I keep up with, you know, really quick learning curve of what they're doing. I use the groove track all the time. I like to leave that on. Track icons I like to leave on. And then the alternatives I've been using more and more all the time. I really like those. Now down below... This becomes one of the more important parts right here because if I want to leave all of these things on, I want to store this as the user default. And then 
Let's do this. Let's do a new project here. Don't close the old one. Create that. Now you're going to see when I open up a brand new project, it has all of the stuff there. And so that's a great way to be able to save that as you're doing additional projects. Now, it's really easy as well to come through here, revert to factory defaults, and get them right back. So nice, easy way to get back and forth. It's great to be able to save that as your default if you like working a certain way. And it's a global thing. It's not just project by project. But really easy to customize this and get exactly what you want and the things that you use the most often. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this little tip. And we'll be doing some more videos this week since we're on a holiday here in the U.S. And I've got a little extra time. So look for more videos this week.